fuck, fuck. These are friends. I hooked the small one. Look at the size of this one. All right, all right. Oh, man. All right, buddy. That was fun. Okay, so that was pretty interesting. I'm not sure if that larger robin was trying to eat the jig or I interrupted some mating dance who knows um, but I let those two go free and here's another trip uh, where I'm porgy fishing with a drop shot and this one we kept for the catch and cook now in the last sea robin catch and cook episode um, we focused on making stock from the rack and the head and this one we're gonna focus on um, roasting the tail meat and for sea robins, cooking it on the bone makes a huge difference. Um, the bone really allows you to roast or grill or pan fry the meat for a lot longer and impart a lot more flavor without overcooking it. Um, you know, that's, that's true for most species of fish. Um, but it's especially true for sea robin. So there's that little drop shot hook. Um, that gammy Aaron Martin's drop shot hook, man, it works really well. And here's the best way I found to bleed sea robin, um, just rake across the gills. You have to break through the gill plate and um, then they'll bleed. If you just poke them under the membrane, nothing happens. So, okay, you make the cut along the backbone, um, and when you sever the spine, make sure you don't go through the bottom of the fish, you know, just sever the spine. And here, pay attention to how the severed backbone pops out. And that's what you want to hold against the cutting board. Now, be very careful when you do this. Um, you know, apply pressure mainly downwards towards the board and not across. And if you happen to slip, just know that your knife is going to travel in an arc. <laughs> Make sure nothing is in that arc. Okay, so that's pretty clean. We, we just cut the tail off. And then we'll clean up um, the bloodline a little bit. And that's it, wrap it in paper towel. And that will keep, you know, for three or four days until we're ready to cook it. So this is my cousin's camera work. Again, I really appreciate him uh, filming these episodes for me. Okay, so that is now in the fridge, and we're going to prepare um, the mushrooms. So these are king oyster mushrooms. Uh, the previous ones, I think those are just small brown button mushrooms. And you can use any combination of mushrooms. Um, I, I would prefer like chanterelles and morels if you can find them. Uh, this, I don't even know what this is. Some kind of Asian woodier. But having a mix of mushrooms is nice for contrast and you know both texture and flavor. These are shiitakes and we're just gonna kind of rip them into large pieces. Okay, so the mirepoix is uh, shallots, garlic, and 
and a little bit of thyme. Um, the shallots you want to cut pretty fine. Uh, this is like a small dice or brunoise. And these will go in halfway through um, cooking the mushrooms, as you'll see later. The garlic we're gonna pound through and then mince. So here we're stripping the thyme leaves off of maybe three sprigs of thyme. You don't want to overdo the thyme. Um, and here's some peas. Uh, these are just frozen peas that are thawed out. Okay, so now we're going to season our sea robin tail. And lots of salt, lots of black pepper. Uh, meanwhile, our frying pan is on the heat so you want a pretty hot pan and you want the oil to be smoking um, the oven is preheated to 420 so we're gonna get a little bit of heat in this fish and then finish it in the oven and then we're going to baste it in a brown butter um, back on the stovetop Alright, so here I'm just mopping up all the salt and pepper and it goes in the pan. Now, the shape of this fish is not, you know, it's not a perfect rectangle, so you have to do your best to try to get heat onto all sides. And you don't need a lot of color here, we're going to add color later. This is just to jump start the process. Um, if you just put it in the oven, without searing it a little bit, it's going to take much longer. Um, the oil I'm using is grapeseed oil. Alright, it goes in the oven, 420, um, anywhere from 6 to 8 minutes, however long it takes for us to deal with the mushrooms. So once again, very hot pan, very hot oil. Mushrooms go in, uh, season, salt, pepper, and what's going to happen is the water is going to come out of these mushrooms. Once the water comes out um, and then evaporates, that's when we're going to add the mirepoix, the shallots and garlic and thyme. So now you see the water just coming out of the mushrooms, they've shrunk a little bit. One interesting thing about mushrooms is that they don't really overcook. So you can take them as far as you need to. Um, anyway, we're going to season the shallots, garlic, and thyme. So yeah, if you add the mirepoix in the beginning, they're just going to burn. There's no point when the mushrooms are going to extrude all that water. So now you can really smell the perfume um, of the aromats. And now you start seeing some browning. That's not going to happen until the water is cooked off. Okay, 
right, so now we add the peas. Um, you just want to warm them through. So maybe 15, 20 seconds, that's it. And you don't see this on camera, but I'm tasting. Taste and then adjust seasoning. That, that goes for everything. Okay, so now we're gonna hold that in the corner, keep it warm. And now we're gonna start um, butter basting the sea robin tail. So at this point, it's pretty much cooked. It might be like 90% cooked, um, but we're gonna bring it a little bit further. And this is why, you know, keeping it on the bone makes such a huge difference. You know, you can never do this with a piece of fillet. You know, if 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 I actually fillet the tail, I mean, that cooking time will be around two and a half, three minutes. You know, here we're talking about a 10, 15 minute long roasting process. So, okay, so that was um, unsalted butter, uh, two or three cloves of lightly crushed garlic, and a few sprigs of thyme. And this is how I would finish off a steak or a um, piece of duck. So, keeping it on the bone makes it very versatile. And here you just baste uh, while you're rolling the sea robin around. And you see that butter is giving a really nice color. Um, the heat at this point is like a medium, medium low. You don't want the butter to brown too quickly. That garlic and thyme is just giving a lot of flavor. Okay, so here is a cute little fish dish that we're gonna plate on. And so the mushroom and peas go down first. And we're actually not finished with the butter. Uh, that butter is gonna end up being a sauce. All right, so the fish goes on top. Just try to center it. Keep it balanced. All right, and now we put the pan back on the heat. We re remove the thyme and garlic, and we're gonna um, season with lemon juice. Now, lemon juice is gonna stop the butter from browning any further, and you're gonna emulsify it on medium heat. This takes about 20 seconds. Okay, so now you spoon the sauce over the fish. And this is really a bistro style dish. Um, if I ever open my little bistro, this will definitely be on the menu. Some, some version of this anyway. And just a couple time sprigs from the butter basting as garnish, that's the dish. Here, I'm um, just gonna show you how, how nice the, the meat actually flakes off the bone. Yeah, I mean, this is, um, in my opinion, one of the best ways to prepare sea robin if you're just after the meat and you can throw it on the grill um, roast it in the oven it's 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 a really underrated fish all right so thanks for watching uh please subscribe if you like what you see